So what's unusual about this quintessential English village? Well, the short answer is, in terms of a certain food-related accolade, it's a staggering 62 times stronger than London. As for the long answer, well, let me take on a little tour. First, to get our bearings, the county is Berkshire, and the nearest town is Maidenhead, which is about 10 miles west of the outskirts of London. About a mile southeast of Maidenhead Town Centre is a wooded road leading into the village in question. The occasional signage, plus a high frequency of German cars, will assure you that you're on the right track. And as the forest clears, you arrive in the village of Bray. And in true English village form, the first sight to greet you on arrival is a cricket pitch, followed by the medieval parish church dedicated to St Michael. Before the 1970s, it was this church that was the village's main claim to fame, or rather, its vicar. A satirical song from the 18th century, known as the Vicar of Bray, depicts the titular character as a religious turncoat, one whose allegiance with Protestantism or Catholicism aligns conveniently with whoever the reigning monarch happens to be at the time. But this is by the way, as this story is about a different religion. Food. Leaving the church takes you out to the high street, where you'll find not one but two buildings that are key to the very heart of this tour. But I'll have to leave you hanging for a few minutes on both counts until the timeline of events catches up. Leading east off the high street is Ferry Road, and it's from here where I can start to explain the aforementioned timeline from when the story begins in earnest. In 1972, Two French brothers in their 30s had already made a name for themselves at this point, having come to London five years earlier, where they opened their flagship restaurant, Le Gavroche. They were, of course, Albert and Michel Roux. Their style of cuisine was just what the doctor ordered for London, which was at the time in a rut brought on by chefs adhering rigidly to the dogma of Auguste Escoffier, a dominant culinary figure around the turn of the century. But the Rue brothers had more than just London on their mind, and so it was in 1972 that they stumbled across what was described as a shabby old pub on the banks of the River Thames in Bray. They transformed said shabby old pub into the building you're looking at, a French restaurant with a very English name, the Waterside Inn. Two years later, in 1974, the inaugural Michelin Guide to Great Britain and Ireland was published. What had started out as a road guide for French motorists at the turn of the century had transformed into the gold standard for restaurant critique. Michelin stars were, and indeed still are, awarded on a scale of 1 to 3 according to the following criteria. 1 star for high quality cooking, worth a stop. 2 stars for, quote, excellent cooking, worth a detour, and finally, three stars for, quote, exceptional cuisine, worth a special journey. The 1974 edition of the guide awarded just 25 single stars to the entirety of the British Isles. The Waterside Inn was one such recipient. In 1977, it earned its second star, and by 1985, it earned the maximum accolade of three Michelin stars. In 1986, the Rue brothers separated their business interests. Albert chose Le Gavroche in London, while younger brother Michel remained here at the Waterside Inn. But unbeknownst to him at the time, a rival from the most unlikely source would emerge the following decade in this very village. In 1995, a self-taught chef in his late twenties bought an old pub and transformed it into a truly one-of-a-kind restaurant a restaurant that would turn the entire industry on its head, as well as carve a niche that seemingly no one even dares imitate. What is this restaurant? Well, believe it or not, you're looking at it. The Fat Duck. And the mastermind behind it is Heston Blumenthal. This inconspicuous listed building with 16th century origins was purchased by Blumenthal, whose cooking style revolves around the mantra, Question Everything. For example, egg and bacon ice cream challenges the idea that ice cream has to be sweet, whilst his Sound of the Sea dish incorporates ambient sound effects to the culinary experience. Of course, this unconventional style will always have its sceptics, but the results seemingly speak for themselves. 
1999, the Fat Duck gained its first Michelin star, followed by its second in 2001, and the top accolade of three stars in 2004. But Heston Blumenthal wasn't done there. During that very same year of 2004, he turned his attention about 30 yards down the road to a 15th century hunting lodge and later a coaching inn, and thus the Hind's Head was open for business. Serving more traditional food than its flagship neighbour, the Hind's Head nevertheless gained a Michelin star of its own in 2013, thus proving Heston to be no flash in the pan, so to speak. Now at this point you may be wondering, what did Michel Roux at the Waterside Inn think of his new neighbour? Both Michel and his brother Albert were renowned for training some of the most notable chefs in the country, and yet here comes this self-taught prodigy with his new scientific approach to cooking, just literally down the road, matching his three Michelin stars. Was there any jealousy or tension? Well, without putting words into anyone's mouth, all evidence indicates that the answer to that is absolutely not. In fact, according to Heston, the first time they met was an occasion during the Fat Duck's early days in which Michel bailed him out of a sticky situation when Heston needed a cake for that day's service. After recounting this story at a public event, Heston went on to leave a couple of quotes as follows. Firstly, quote, I describe the Rue brothers as effectively the Beatles of British gastronomy. And secondly, quote, I'm very proud to be your neighbour. So that leaves little ambiguity on the matter, and makes a refreshing change in an industry notorious for its cutthroat nature. And in another break from conventional wisdom, in this case regarding mixing business with family, both Rue brothers were successful in passing on their respective restaurants to their respective sons. Albert's son, Michel Rue Jr., named after his uncle, took over the reins at Le Gavroche in 1991, and Michel Senior's son, Alain, did likewise at the Waterside Inn in 2002. So it's clear then that the village of Bray, with a population of less than 10,000, is punching above its weight when it comes to fine dining. But just how far above its weight? To address this, we need to take a look at the urban culinary capital of Britain, London. So young aspiring British chefs are often advised to move to London if they're serious about their craft, due to the sheer volume of Michelin star restaurants in the capital. To date, over 70 restaurants in London have at least one star to their name. Going through them all would take far too long. But what I'll do instead is outline all the London restaurants which, at the time of making this video, have a full three stars. Starting in the super wealthy Mayfair district, we have Sketch, the lecture room and library, the brainchild of legendary French chef Pierre Gagnier. Half a mile from here is five star hotel The Connaught, whose restaurant is run by Hélène de Rose. And fittingly enough, de Rose's mentor, Alain Ducasse, runs his namesake restaurant at the Dorchester, also a five star hotel, just a couple of streets away. Leaving Mayfair and entering West London, we have two entries from Notting Hill. First, the Ledbury, run by Australian chef Brett Graham. And secondly, Core by Claire Smith, incidentally one of Gordon Ramsay's protégés and former chef patron of the final three-star restaurants over in Chelsea, which is, of course, Restaurant Gordon Ramsay. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to start fawning over Gordon, in fact, here's a man who churns out restaurants like Steven Seagal churned out movies back in the day. But credit where credit's due, Ramsay's flagship restaurant has maintained three Michelin stars since way back in 2001, which in longevity terms makes it second in the country to just one restaurant, the Waterside Inn. So in terms of Michelin stars per capita, a gauge I've just invented, Accounting for London's population of over 8 million, Bray beats London 62 times over. And while we're talking statistics, the UK is currently home to 9 three-star restaurants, which puts it at 7th in the world. The ninth restaurant, by the way, is in Cumbria. But the story here is about much more than just accolades. It's about legacy. In 2020, Michel Roux Sr. died, aged 78 
The following year, his big brother, Albert, passed away. But an entire generation of chefs who trained under the Rue brothers, either directly in their kitchens or via the Rue Scholarship, established in 1984, reads like a who's who of the greats of the industry of today. Ironically, one of the few omissions is Michel Roux Sr.'s self-taught neighbour, Heston Blumenthal, who continues to push the boundaries of cuisine in his own truly unique way, in this truly unique village. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.